Meet the Snapmaker U1, a multi-tool head 3D printer that promises five times faster multicolor printing and up to five times less filament waste. Is it as revolutionary as it sounds? Let's dive in. Launched on Kickstarter in August 2025, the Snapmaker U1 raised over 7.8 million US dollars for more than 9,300 backers on day one. The U1 features four independent tool heads, each with its own filament, which means no purging of the previous color. They've coined this tech snap swap, and it allows tool to tool swaps in just five seconds. It does this using alignment pins, magnets, and a clever locking mechanism. Under the hood, it's a Core XY machine, meaning tool heads can hit print speeds up to 500 millimeters per second and acceleration of up to 20,000 millimeters per second squared, which is pretty standard on modern 3D printers. Snapmaker claims tool head alignment accuracy within 0.04 millimeters and achieves that thanks to a special tool head alignment sensor. On first setup, you'll be prompted to clean each nozzle before the machine uses this sensor to determine the exact offset of each tool head's nozzle. With a build volume of 270mm on the X and Y and 270mm on the Z, there's just enough room to print some cosplay helmets in here. The machine is semi-enclosed, with tempered glass on the front and back, and boasts a rigid metal frame covered by a plastic shroud. There's some grommets up here on the top of the machine, some speculation here, but I'm hoping these are for a top cover that will release at a later date. Nozzles can reach up to 300 degrees Celsius for exotic materials, and the bed heats up to 100 degrees. It has a USB port for direct printing and wireless for network printing from your preferred slicer. There's also some mystery ports here that I think are for some future add-ons. Filament is held by these spool grippers, two on each side. These are quite similar to the AMS Lite tool holders, but these ones aren't spring-loaded because filament is never rolled back into the feed tube for parking. There's a touch screen, built-in camera, and some adequate lighting. There's auto bed leveling, flow rate calibration, resonance compensation, as well as an app to alert you when your prints are done. Everything you'd expect to see on a modern 3D printer. One thing I'm super happy to see is that the version of Clipper on these machines is completely open source. You have access to all the awesome features associated with Clipper and full control of your printer config file to fine tune your machine to your exact use case. This is something we don't often see as companies like Bamboo Lab, Creality, and Elegoo have started to lock users out of this config file entirely. Okay, let's do some test prints. Keep in mind, I have a beta unit, so there's still tons of time for Snapmaker to improve or fix bugs before this thing hits retail. First up, we have to do a multicolor Benchy. This one took an hour and a half and used all four tool heads. And this is the resulting waste material. For comparison, something like this on an AMS style filament switcher would produce over 150 grams of waste and take over 10 hours of print time. Let's compare how long it takes the Snapmaker U1 to switch materials and how long it takes the Creality High Combo with the CFS filament changer.
That's an astonishing difference for just one tool change. This really adds up over the course of a print that has hundreds of tool changes. Next, I printed this octopus bottle holder from STL Flix. I'm super happy the Snapmaker Slicer is based on Orca Slicer, as I'm very familiar with these tools here, including the color painting feature. This turned out great at a layer height of 0.2 millimeters, and for all those tool changes, we're only left with this somewhat hollow purge tower, and a few printer poops from the initial nozzle purges. Print time on this was 14 hours. For comparison, Bamboo Studio estimated 34 hours of print time on the P1S with an AMS, with over 200 grams of waste. And to really torture this machine, I printed this weaved vase from Dave Makes Stuff. For this, I used a rainbow PLA and black PLA, and this thing turned out awesome. Print time here was 14 hours, printed at 0.2 millimeter layer height, Again, for comparison, Bamboo Studio estimated 35 hour print time on the P1S with an AMS with over 400 grams of waste. That's almost half a roll of filament worth of waste. Next, I printed a couple EVs. And for this one, I tried using PETG for a support interface material. PETG doesn't stick to PLA, so the idea here is to have some easily removable supports. Unfortunately, that meant some parts of the print didn't adhere to the support material, and the prime tower also broke, thanks to a few PETG layers mixed in there. Despite the fails, and after some cleanup, I did get a couple cool EVs out of this. This took only 6 hours of print time at a layer height of 0.16mm, which is amazing. To really illustrate how useful the PETG support interface could be, I modeled a T in Fusion and did some fine tuning on my settings. Here's the result. Perfectly supported overhangs with a great surface finish. Finally, I printed this Apex Shield battery that I designed back in 2017, when the Prusa MMU first came out. Again, another great multicolor print, and this one only took 9 hours. For the early bird price of $7.99 USD, and the retail price of $9.99, the Snapmaker U1 is truly going to disrupt the multicolor 3D printing ecosystem. If you want to see further testing of this machine, go ahead and hit subscribe and leave me a comment about what you'd like to see printed on this machine specifically. As always, thanks for watching and happy printing.